Well, good afternoon. It's a pleasure to be with you today. It's a great day to be in Detroit. Um, we have exciting news. I'm very excited today. Um, the Detroit Public Schools has been a topic for a long time in terms of the succession plan for Robert Bob. And first of all, I'd like to thank Robert for his service. Um, he's worked hard. He's done many good things, particularly in the early phases of coming to Detroit Public Schools. Um, but it's time for the next chapter to be made with Detroit Public Schools and to continue that work. And to do that work, I believe we found the best. Roy Roberts is one of our true success stories in Metro Detroit and the state of Michigan. And I believe he's the right person to lead Detroit Public Schools. So I'm looking forward to having him, appointing him as the new emergency manager for the public school district. Um, Roy's background is incredible. He's been a successful automotive executive, a true leader in a field that has been huge in our area, but he's been a standout throughout 30 to 40 years of service, 23 with General Motors, and being a true leader in that capacity. In addition to that, though, doing all this automotive work has been fabulous. He's been a huge community player in terms of the work he's done in many nonprofit organizations and many other groups. Um, in particular, one that stood out to me when we're talking about kids is his work with Boy Scouts of America and his leadership role there in terms of what he did um, with kids throughout our country. And also, he did work on the board of Western Michigan University. So we have someone that blends that best balance of business skill sets, community skill sets, and someone so well respected. So I'm very excited to have Roy on board. And so the plan is, is Roy will be coming on board in the next couple weeks and transitioning with Robert Bob through the end of Robert's contract. But Roy's getting in the saddle, ready to take charge, and focus on what really counts, educating Detroit's children. Because that's what really matters. And that's the point I really want to emphasize before I turn it over to Roy. The focus that we found in common as we discussed the right people to lead the public schools is someone that's truly focused on educating our children and the importance of that. Because we've had a failing system not only in Detroit, but our entire state. And I outlined a number of those facts last week in my education message. Um, we've got wonderful teachers. We've got wonderful administrators. But we have a broken system. So our goal here is to really get a system that's working well statewide, but in terms of one of the places to truly start with this is right here in Detroit. And to make that happen, so we're going to work hard legislatively in Lansing to solve the statewide issues, but right here on the ground in Detroit, we've got a field leader that's going to make great things happen. And with that, let me turn it over to that man, Roy Roberts. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, it's good to be here. And Governor, I, I should tell you that it's good to be here to talk about uh, the youth in this community rather than some of these media people that I know are accustomed to me talking about the number of cars we had uh, last month. There is no better assignment that the Governor or anyone in this state could give me other than making a difference in the lives of young people in the Detroit school system. Nothing is more important to me. And the important thing is I'm not looking for another job. I want this job. I want this job. We want to make a difference in the lives of young people here in Detroit. I told the governor I want every youngster in the city of Detroit to have the opportunity or the option for every opportunity that I have ever had in my life and even more. We're going to be putting in place advisory committee for me made up of leaders in the community that have always cared about uh, the Detroit school system and the young people. We want them for counsel and help in everything that we do. We're going to be calling on ministers. We're going to be calling on the entire community to get involved behind this. Not just a hoorah, but a real meaningful way of making a difference in the lives of young people. When I grew up in Muskegon, the people that I admired and respected the most were my teachers. And I'm a product of public education all of my life. I wanted to be a teacher and I wanted to be a coach because those were the people I respected. I want us to get to a point where we are not lambasting the teachers, but respecting them for the great job they're doing. 
and we want to make sure we're doing the right thing. I think the, the governor has laid out a plan as we go forward, how we'd like to be able to reward teachers, I think is outstanding. If we have a teacher that cannot perform and is damaging to the well-being of one of our young people, we'll deal with that. That's a one-off issue. We think that's an exception. We think the majority of them are really good and we want them to feel good and bring the best that they can bring to the party to educate these young people. So I'm going to be calling on this community. I'm going to call on people outside of this community or anywhere in this country that can give us the best ideas and the best approaches to education. We are determined to do a good, credible job in educating our young people. That's exactly what the governor wants, and that's why I signed up, because if I didn't feel that he was totally committed to this, I wouldn't be the right guy. I am the right guy. I'm convinced of it, and he's the right leader to take us forward, and I'm going to give you everything I got and call on everybody in this community to help make a difference. That's it. Because I think this community is tired. I think it's tired of all the negative things that are going on. They're tired of their kids failing. They're tired of their kids. Not. I don't think any of us that have any ability have the right to sit on the sideline anymore. We don't have that right. We can't just sit back and say, woe is me. I think if you have some ability to make a difference, you have to get involved. And that's why I got involved. Uh, Maureen and I live uh, a pretty comfortable life. And uh, if it wasn't for this gentleman here, who, who, by the same token, didn't have to run for governor, didn't have to take on that daunting task, but you, it has to be a mission. This is a mission with me. This is something I want to do. There are a lot of things I could have done. This is what I want to do, and I want to be absolutely focused, and I'm not going to let anybody in this state deter me from that. We're going to be very focused. Please, right here. Robert Bob said that he Well, I really appreciate Robert's work, and that was a later development in terms of my initial discussions with him is that he wanted to wrap things up. And as a practical matter, I, I respect him having differing views or going through that process, but one of the things is, is Robert did a lot of good things. But at the same time, I said one of the things I was hoping to do was find someone with strong Detroit connections to really come in and lead our schools. And I couldn't think of a better person than Roy. So I think we've got a top-notch person. And again, I thank Robert for all his hard work. Well, he's been a successful businessman for most of his career. He understands financial issues. And more important than just his own knowledge, he's been a team builder. Because this is not just a one-person job. It's about building the right team of people and having the resources to deliver. And Roy's got a track record of successfully building teams for decades. So I'm excited about that. What do you want him to deliver? Is it a zero uh, balanced out budget? Is it building 70 schools? What are the deliverables? Well, it's interesting how you phrase that. What's most important ultimately that we get to is 100% college or career ready for the kids. When you look at our school system, we have a failing school system because too much time spent on the dollars and cents of it as opposed to the outcomes for the children. And one thing I really appreciate about Roy, that fire, that passion that you've seen already, is he's focused on the kids. And when you put that focus on the kids, we will work through the financial issues. We've got a lot of good financial sense here. We will figure out ways to deal with that. But the primary focus needs to be on helping these children succeed. A lot. I mean, that's the point. He's the emergency manager, and he's, he reports to me, but he's running his own operation. He will be running Detroit Public Schools. Oh, we'll put all that out soon. We just wrapped all that up. But in terms of the terms, I mean, it's a good contract. We're starting with one year to begin with and going from there. Um, again, the longer I can keep this guy, the happier, but he's going to turn this thing around one way or another with good team. But, but the autonomy yeah. issue that you asked for, I don't know any person, yeah, sure. I don't know any person on the face of the earth that is totally autonomous. Not our president, not our governor. I'm reporting to him, 
and we've got a, a state treasurer that's in it, but we're all signed up together to solve these issues. If I didn't have a degree of autonomy in the backing of the governor, you wouldn't get me in this job. I know what it's going to take. It's going to be a hell of a lot of work. It's going to take a lot of people to get this done, and I want to be at the focal point of making sure we bring the people to the party. We've gone through too many changes and too many hurt kids, and as we sit here and talk, kids are being hurt right now in this school system. We've got to be about changing that. And I think the people in this community want that. And we're going to make it happen. No, I do not have plans. A little early. I've got to talk to uh, the unions. I want to make sure I'm talking to them. I want to talk to uh, a lot of community leaders. I've got to look at our finances again and see just where we are. I'm in no position to say I'll ask for any concessions. Uh, yes. I'm going to I'm going to evaluate it, but I'm pretty convinced that we're pretty far down the road, and we'll be continuing with that, but assessing everything that we do in the district to say what makes sense, what is the best thing for the kids. I couldn't hear that very well. Well, the school board was advising and giving counsel to the superintendents of school and hiring and firing. Uh, I think that I really have a little more authority to get things done. And there is no question in my mind that the governor is going to push really hard for us to make sure we're educating kids, get, getting them career ready and ready for college. And so I don't really have to respond to a school board. I don't have to respond to the politics or the idiosyncrasies of a school board. And we've had people in this community who have served us well, but that means we can move faster, I think, and get more done. And we'll get more input from every sector of this community, but that's the great difference that I see. And state legislature have put us in a position where we can move aggressively and fast to get the job done. Uh, some of his people contacted me, and I think they had talked to a lot of community people, and maybe my name came up one or two times, and uh, I didn't immediately sign up until I realized his commitment to education. And once I saw his commitment, then I thought it was something that was doable, and that's when I signed on. Well, I, I wish I could answer all those questions. I cannot. But that's why I'm here, to get rid of some of that anxiety. We ought to be able to tell parents in this community in pretty short order, if you have a child in this school system, in this school, you can be assured that child will be there for the next five years. Okay. So they can have a degree of permanency about what's going on. Can't answer all the questions today. I need more input from a lot of people, and I know the anxiety that exists in this community, I know where the parents are. We can't take risk with our kids and their well-being and their education. And I understand that uh, fervently. At, at a high level, our goal is to make sure that we're educating kids in the Detroit school system today and continue to build on a system that might be more formidable as we go forward. I don't have, I didn't come to you today with a plan that we could lay out and say it's A, B, C, D. I don't have that. But I guarantee you, time is of the essence. We're losing kids every day. We're losing money every day. And we're going to move aggressively to put plans in place that the teachers, the administrators, and everybody can understand and hopefully be supportive of. I, 
I couldn't quite hear that. I'm sorry. Yeah. I think, I think we're going to continue that. I think we don't dare interfere with the school year. Parents need a degree of permanency. And uh, we want to review everything. We're going to put everything on the table. And if we need to modify or make changes, we're going to modify and make changes. But we want to make sure, I'm going to repeat myself a hundred times, that we're educating the young people in the Detroit school system. Yes, I will. Uh, we're phasing out uh, the private equity firm. Uh, I terminated myself from a corporate board last week. I will be resigning from another corporate board immediately. And I do have some things that will go into a blind trust because we don't want any conflict. I don't want anybody trying to distract me from educating kids in Detroit. Nobody. Nothing. So we're going to move all that to the side. Get that off the table. And uh, we're going to work feverishly to make a difference in the lives of young people. Thank you. Again, Brian will be available <clears throat> after. Thanks, Governor. It's great. Thank you. Yeah, great to see you. Okay. I want to see Bob tomorrow. I want to spend some time with him. I really need to catch up with uh, everything he has in place. I officially start work on the 15th. That's my start date, but uh, I think I started two days ago. <laughs> yeah.